Hello everyone, and welcome to the 275th Milo Lepote Drawing School Weekly Life Critique Stream. See how easy that was to say? Tell a friend, Whoa. settle in, and get your art pants on, because we're going to be analyzing and critiquing art. Wait, I've got to mute this. We go. Thanks, Ricardo, for giving me my audio back to me. <laughs> if you're new here, we're here to round up the art that didn't get critiqued on our subreddit. My Little Pony Drawing School is a place where you can get your art, uh, you can post your art for friendly and helpful advice on different, uh, advice in different directions you can take and tips on how you might improve. Uh, but not everyone gets critiqued, so we're here to pick up those that didn't, so we can help them out. Uh, at least one per person per week, anyway. As usual, if you want to get better at drawing uh, and help someone else in the process, we highly recommend you go to our subreddit or Discord and uh, provide some critique and feedback yourself. You don't need to be an expert, anybody can do it. And as uh, someone who's taken A-level art classes in college, let me tell you, about two-thirds of the class was like analytical work, analyzing and breaking down every aspect of other people's work, both famous artists and just those we like personally. So really, you're missing out on doing any critique work yourselves, and we're over here hogging all the XP that you could be getting. So think about it. Your opinion might just help somebody out, and you might just learn something. And by we... Wait, nope. That for those who want to learn by having their art broken down, we are here. And by we, I mean the ever-fluffy Alicor. Hello. The expert of the legendary Fist of the Messy Brush technique picks you up. Hello. We have the creative and awesome Len. That's... At some point, so, we will have Len. At some point, we will. Uh, unfortunately, the squeaky mousey <laughs> pencil case is off in the background, uh, get, uh, you know, in a, a world of boxes, just lost in the chaos. So she won't be joining us today. And the zombie is off being the best zombie he can be. So that's why I am here to rescue the stream, some blue raccoon that they let in. You just seem to really like the art supplies, so... Yeah, I just, I just draw onto them like a magnet. <laughs> So if you have any art you'd like us to critique, then f shove it at our faces, fire at us, however you want to do it. Just get your art to our faces so we can see it. And uh, without further ado, let's start with turning on the stream so people can see. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with Tofu's up here in the top left. Once I just figure out how to zoom the camera to the right place. There we go. Yay. I'm trying to tackle with like the eight keyboards I have on my desk and trays full oh, no. of dice and packets full you of acrylic pens packing. because I'm a key pencil case apparently. Apparently. <laughs> yes. I mean, someone has to be today. Uh huh. Yeah, someone has to be. I'm probably the closest thing. Physically, the closest one to her in the world until she moves. So, uh, what do we have here? <laughs> a lovely piece by Tofu. Our friend from the Discord channel. We like to show favoritism to those who are here in the channel and try to do those first. Although I don't know if Tofu is actually in the channel with us. I've lost Discord. It has run away. With us. Hooray. Tofu, yeah, do you have any questions? Here. If you're able to talk. Yeah, I guess the problem here is the shading, right? Um, it's overall too soft and the shadow shapes um, that, right? And then um, doesn't have texture like um, what Ellie Core has pointed out before. So yeah, it's about um, using texture brushes, I guess, um, to do my shading and start using like soft uh, airbrush to do all the shadings. You know, that's yeah, soft airbrush and uh, hard rounds. You know, I use some more texture stuff to shade. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, like when I um, when I'm doing shading, I like to use a big soft round airbrush to just get the general soft shades going in you know all the areas that'll definitely be hit with shadow maybe some that'll be blanketed a little more than others but when i want to get into the nitty-gritty i really like pulling out that texture because then you can really get those nice moments going on when there's that line of really heavy shading and it goes mm -hmm. from the heavy shading to sort of sort of shaded like that light shading and that the texture really brings stuff out if i feel personally um, but every artist there's a thousand different ways to do stuff it's it's it's, yeah. it's I always feel like it's it's a janky answer, but you just gotta try. You gotta try different stuff. You gotta be messy, be yeah. weird, do strange stuff. Stuff tends to fall into place. But the video Pixie linked earlier, which is uh, 
I wanted to call him Mark Bucci. <laughs> but um, Marco uh, Bucci, uh, I, you know what? I can't say it right. Pixie, what was? How do you say the name? Marco Bucci. It is Bucci. Okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, Marco Bucci. Uh, if anyone here listening, they're really, really great painter. Uh, great advice for digital artwork as well in painting. Even if you want to do line work, still good to know painting tips. Lots of good solid stuff there. So I recommend googling googling said person or coming into our discord and i'm sure you can find all the links we post yeah and yep. if you want to just google on your own that's talk, talk to me. yeah talk talk to me and i'll extol the virtues of mako <laughs> <laughs> i so i think i think tofu um one of the things to think about <clears throat> is just contrast so I've, I've been adding these like little bits of like shaded areas and all that sort of thing, just like sort of a bit under the beak and a bit around here and sort of all that kind of stuff. And just pretty much adding contrast to the places that should look visually separate. Because when, when you, you know, you zoom out and it's, it's fairly small, it's a bit difficult to, um, yeah. Okay. Read. And so, yeah, like contrast, can always be good especially when when you're looking at like birds the the top part of the beak this top part of the beak and this bottom part of the beak um you'll see a lot of the time in illustrations and that sort of stuff they'll be different colors or this will be a lighter color and the bottom will be a darker color and that's uh because it like makes it read more easily at a at a glance yeah so just just looking at stuff like that, just to sort of make your drawings easier to read at first glance, mm -hmm. would be good. Yep. But in general, yeah. Yeah, I see. Really Definitely. Day. Really good work. Yeah, your your anatomy is definitely getting better and better and better. Um, it's very solid face structure going on here. The beak is well done. The eyes are nicely placed. It's got some really, and the clothes the clothes are nice too. Hmm. Yeah, at the moment, like with my stuff, I've been doing some uh, practice of like facial shapes and like looking at, you know, uh, how much of a point the sort of front of the face provide, like creates or how much of a flat it creates and that sort of stuff. And I think we were talking last week about this, but it's that kind of stuff like just takes uh, time and practice and that sort of stuff. So if you want to like mm. mess around with face shapes, just keep to be honest, you're on a good track. Yeah, okay. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, actually, I got some help with the face shape for this particular one. Um, yeah, so, so maybe that's why it looks um, pretty good this time. But yeah, I'm still trying to practice more and learn more about the face shapes. Yeah. Mm. Well, you're on, a, you're on a project that has other artists, so you can yeah. use them to your advantage. Yeah, oh, indeed. I, I do Come really on, love the the weight and shape and everything that you've got going on, like the the clothes, the scarf, the just like the whole body in general. Everything has like a nice, like it, it's placed in a very good like three D space. It's it's really good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I guess um that's all. One question, right? <laughs> well you could yeah we could take one picture for you but if you have have anything else on this picture that you're concerned with we can look at that um okay so the other question that i got is the um um variation of color in the background you can see the background looks looks kind of meh to be honest like there's not a lot of variation of color it's just like red glowing red yeah, I have the, that the, idea, the like, only thing that uh that that sort of does to me is that the flag very much like blends into it. It's kind of hard to see at first. You mm -hmm. always don't really separate it very easily from the background. Yeah. Like I know if, the... if I if I color, sorry, if I color pick between the this, the, between this part of the background and the flag color, there is almost no different differentiation in terms of hue. Mm. Okay. And, the, yeah. the hue and I think also the shape, like the tatteredness of it, also sort of uh, because we're not seeing much of it. There's not really much shape for our brains to define what exactly it is. If you, if that makes any mm. sense. 
Yeah. Mm. So more variation, more, more, more dynamic shapes. So it's just like yeah. flat. It sort and of then, looks um, like negative space to me. You know, just like at yeah, a glance. Okay. Yeah, and also be careful of the background color and the foreground color. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. yeah. There's there's like there's a lot of different ways to like create contrast. You can like yeah. change the hue, change the lightness, change the everything. It's yes. it's just a little bit too similar between these two. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and giving g putting something more solid in the background, but that's sort of blurred away, can kind of help to have your brain di differentiate and add like, okay, this this is an environment. There's things in the background, and I can see that mm -hmm. by contrast, the flag is in the foreground. You know. Yeah, I was about to do like a motion blur, but I can't figure out motion blur in CSP, so I just like, oh, I just like leave it there is, there, is a, there is a filter for it if you want to use motion blur. A uh, Gaussian blur is the one that that helps you just make things softer. Yeah, I want to have like a caution blur for the background, and you have the motion blur mm -hmm. for the flag, the flag's like moving, you know? Yes. Um, but yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't work out as well. I think that once I use motion blur, it becomes way too strong. I really diverge that mm, attention. It's it's about the experimenting with the with the settings to make sure it's not going too wild yeah. or in the wrong direction. Just play with it, and sometimes maybe uh, what I found with motion blur is sometimes it can kind of go out of control. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's a case of trying to get things in a way that's you know getting it like halfway there with your own skill, and then using the motion blur just to add like a helpful effect to it can sometimes work. Yeah. But it's it's about playing with the tools that you have really, and filters yeah, are still there. Yeah. Yeah, one and, of the most like, interesting. Oh, sorry, Annie. Oh no, I was just gonna say, and it's like it's really easy to experiment with the blur tools in Clip Studio Paint because yeah. it live updates for you. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to like really throw those sliders around and see the differences before you hit OK. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just make sure you have the preview button clicked on. Which yeah. should <laughs> usually. Yeah, of course. It's not like Photoshop um, where it takes like it takes like a full like three seconds to <laughs> create the profile well, the preview depends picture. how big and heavy layer your image does is, depend but... on it but i've just i've had like completely <laughs> like average pictures in photoshop where you change something and it's like oh processing hold on a second uh almost there okay there we go and clip studio is usually fairly instant uh, but it depends on the size of the image and and the filter you're doing uh things like really really heavy gaussian blurs are going to take like a while like while it's slowly going along the screen so you've got to be patient and wait for it to catch up so motion blur is definitely going to do that as well um i see i see yeah I one was, of the most, some, one like, most interesting pictures stuff. i've done was uh a commission um and it's got an oc of mine who's a a green skinned like lamia pony uh in a background and a, a sort of fairly blue and purpley colored oc in a background with trees and gaps between the trees where it's just sky so trying to get this like green pony to stand out on a green leafy background you know it's exactly like it makes sense the character's like designed evolutionarily to blend in it kind of makes sense but uh, you know i want the character to pop so i had to play a lot with hues values and everything and do a whole ton of adjustments mm. to try and get the because it, it started out with them just like looking exactly uh this is like they blend in so well that it was like not visually clear at all and in the end i managed to get it to look decent so it, it's possible it's just about playing with those hues and adjustments to make everything uh pop from one another yeah i see i see uh pixie uh i'm just i'm just chucking some sort of like cloudy clouds sort of like smoke sort of stuff in the background to mm. try to break out the colors a yeah. bit. and like also you've got you've got this sort of uh yellow uh sort of shading highlighting sort of at the edges kind of thing which mm. which is sort of it's it's reminding me of that like piece that you did with the fire in the background and trying to do that sort of stuff so i'm kind of like adding that sort of color to the smoke mm -hmm. stuff and i think i think someone else did some like added some around the outside here and all that sort of stuff trying to well. draw my mm. tablets messing up i figure since the light source is kind of all around them there's like a burning fire going on it's very very much affecting this side so i figured it's also going to affect the other side considering i see stuff also happening to the left so just to get like a you don't even need to be very specific it's gonna be a glow right a fire yeah. from that distance is gonna be like a soft glow okay, so we... just yeah. to get like a swipe you don't even need to perfectly follow you know your fluff lines or anything like sure if you want to get really really into detail you etch out like where the darks would catch on the fluff mm -hmm. but for now um 
yeah, just to get that nice overall. Because it, it'll also be a little less uh, splotchy, I feel like. Uh, hold on, let me turn off my layer. Like, the shading you have on the edge here um, feels a little splotchy because it's just, like, so bright and then suddenly stops. And mm. just kind of, like, just as that rim. I, I would just, like, go much bigger like I did here with this nice large stroke. You could even blur that out more. But um, if I had my actual tools, I could do something better. But <laughs> Nice, yeah. So this I is would, recorded, I would... right? Yes, yep. it is being recorded. Okay, amazing. Thank you. I would I would even out the flag a little bit. It's it's totally okay to have details and especially things like tears in the fabric makes a lot of sense, but I would I would even out a little bit so that it's not quite as heavy because that's part of what's making the shape look a bit uh, a bit awkward to me. So I'd definitely have some like tears mm. and fraying around the edge here, but I as you can see I increased the I increased the sort of uh, volume of the flag. Uh, take out some of the gaps and then just like put a few obvious ones in if you want, mm. uh, but just to really sell, in fact, actually, that one I just did might be more better suited to uh, beh slightly behind the character, just to uh, really create some overlap. Uh, but yeah, just it, it's good to experiment with, but giving the flag some, actually, that kind of makes the feather look like it continues on, but goes black. See, it's all experiment and learning. You don't know until you try something, really, but um, yeah. It, it makes the flag more readable to have this like wavy flag shape as it's sort of like blowing around and and having texture having too much texture in the wrong places can make something harder to read whereas just less is more about placing it right and just doing mm -hmm. the things that you do include the best you, way you can can help that yeah, readability so yeah yeah for it, sure. it looks it looks for, for some reason i think uh picado doesn't oh okay picado's just slow okay all good for I was, me, I was, like I was curious as to. Yeah, Picard would look a bit frozen. I was trying to ask who did the texture. I was, I was that drawing. So nice. <laughs> I was oh, drawing. That, that, that was me. I was, I was, I, I was just uh, chucking a low opacity um, yellow okay. brush sort of around, trying to see what looks. Yeah, I feel like Picard was like be like, it's like one second ago, it's like it's like my <laughs> old work, and then a second later, it's like amazing strokes, and it looks so nice. The, or the scarf. I was like, "What? What happened? I missed all that." Yeah, it's hanging it, back a bit. Fabric... I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's all good. Fabric's super fun. I I also threw some stuff down, um, just to mess with it. I I have a lot of fun with fabric. Honestly, study some fabric. It's in, it's intimidating and Ooh. daunting. But to just like drop a shirt or a towel on a chair and then try to draw oh. that, and you really get to learn where the curves are and the fun that has like the gravity with where the fabric gets pulled and all the little bumps and all the little ways the light just gets blocked out and you don't notice and really brings yeah. like fabric to life. So I highly recommend that okay. as a study. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll do I'll do some, cause, uh, yeah, I've been doing a lot of uniforms and uh, a lot of them are just papers, the way I'm shading them. So yeah, I would like to do, I, I would like to learn more as well. That's good, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's well, good good. Nothing else. We're going to move on. Cool. Yeah. Good work. Thank, so. thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good work. Good work. <laughs> nice. okay. uh, is, do we have anyone else, Ali, who's here right now? We do. Um, in the Picarto chat, we have Bore Borealis, um, who did. Let me find. They did this lovely one off to the right. Uh, give me other pen. This one down Just... here. Just, just to, just to make sure. Um, yeah. Even if Ricardo is a little bit laggy, uh, is the recording going to be all good? Uh, it should be. Yeah. Okay. I, I, cool. I lowered the frame rate of the uh, browser window thing to see if that helps, and if it doesn't, then I'll just, I'll do like a just showing the screen. So. Yeah. We'll see. All good. So Borealis, if you're there, system, system draws. I, I'm not sure how to. How would you like to be addressed? We we can do yours BSD. if you do respond. BSD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just check the user list. They are still here. Woohoo. And, and basically, because this is going to be a lag, so I might as well throw this out here. If you have any questions, um, anything you struggled with, anything you want particular help with. I know in your post here you wrote, um, I tried something new and as always when trying something new, I have anatomy trouble. I need help with the neck. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a tricky thing. Yeah. 
It's, is this on you? I think that's the one that Ali marked. The sort of like yeah, line the one with circle. That's sick. Cool, ah, cool. Yeah. This ah. one. Brilliant. Yeah, uh, first off, kudos for trying something new. Um, it's always hard, but it's good to push yourself as an artist. Uh, but yeah, I guess I'll wait because I think you're finally getting caught up with audio. So. Yeah, next up. The neck on the right pony looks weird, they said. Mm. It might come down to, like, sort of what sort of under sketching you've uh, done. I'm not sure how, uh, how much you built up the image with like skeletons or circles and lines or whatever it might be. Uh, was there any ways that you did under sketching? Because that can help you a lot to figure out the, the poses and what the character's doing. References as well can be very handy dandy. Yes, um, absolutely. You, you may not find the perfect reference, but usually there's a reference that can help indicate even if you go to using cats or dogs besides real horses or even other artists work um there's a lot of good reference to be found out there and no matter what anyone thinks or says references are good and should always be used no matter what if you need help use them they're there for you i want to create like an it's effect delicious. on obs that just has the word references like on the screen like vibrate <laughs> and then it disappears <laughs> yeah it's the this angle is a hard one like the the one on the right is is like a difficult one so don't don't be too mm -hmm. down about it or anything like that this is the, the, this is one of those cases where i would i would try to draw this uh to sort of stretch my abilities and then i would probably like fire with it so A lot of like experimentation and trying stuff out with references is going to be useful when you're doing poses like this. Thinking um, something that can help a lot is thinking about the center line. So coming down from like the chin uh, down to the center is probably like somewhere around about here, and then it'll like trace around here I'm thinking about like how that happens on the horse is going to be useful like on this one here it's like something like that mm -hmm. and that's like something that I, I I'm always uh, using when I'm like looking at my horses especially the weird those ones it's also good to keep in mind like uh how far you're trying to push because this this is this is possible i think you could find horses trying to like turn around and nip the saddle area um i feel like that is a possible thing for horses to do just horses are very um horses got a lot of movement in that neck but sometimes, sometimes you got to use your own cutie mark as reference when you're drawing yourself you know <laughs> you got to turn around and stare at it yep exactly <laughs> With with when you when you're sort of uh, thinking about this front section of the horse, I tend to um, go towards this kind of a shape. So like you know you have a head here, it's like a horsey sort of a head shape, and then it's kind of like a something sort of roughly like that. And then, you know, the shoulder sort of connects in here and all that sort of 
fun stuff. And I don't know anatomy, but yeah, some some kind of like this, and then you know you can sort of try to rotate that shape in sort of three D space and all that sort of stuff, and think about the where these sort of lines on either side of the neck are going to go, because those are going to be very useful when you're trying to like convey that twisting. Yeah. I think probably the most important things for like a twisting necky sort of a pose like this is going to be these two lines, working out where these go and how to do those. These these two that sort of tuck in down here. And then on this side specifically, this kink. How that looks. Like if if you do if you do anything that's kind of like realistic sort of stuff, you're going to encounter this shape which is sort of a kink on one side, and then stretch on the other. It's useful in legs, in arms, in necks, in like anywhere. And so, like thinking about this shape and how it applies to sort of your uh, specific pose that you're doing at the moment, or the specific bit of like stuff that you're sketching, can be really good. Kink. And the stretch. I mean, it's definitely someone's kink. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but in general, it looks good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, some like head, neck, diamond dish sort of a shape. Mm. Again, looking at references of just and sort of just looking at and breaking down how the shapes sort of blend into one another can really help. Hmm. If um if you head to our yeah if if you head to our subreddit um there's a challenge there which is about uh uh life drawing so looking at like real horses and then uh, trying to break them down in different ways and sort of all that kind of stuff which might be useful um, I'll actually I had to use yeah. uh, real life horse pictures for a uh, uh, drawing drawing reference or at least at least reference for a certain part of the body. <laughs> Which was an awkward thing to be Google searching. Oh. Yeah, that that challenge goes over um, uh, life drawings from real horses and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully that can be useful. It's really good stuff. Highly recommend. Plus plus. Plus plus. Any other questions? Coolly cool. In that case, what one do we have up next? Uh, the next one, we we can do whatever. Do you want to just go back to the top and start yeah. going in order? Let's All right. go. Oops, I'm drawing. I just select the hand tool. There we go. We'll go no drawing. <laughs> <laughs> no drawing. It's banned. Yeah. Rainbow Pony. Rainbow Pony. Magical Horse. Rainbow Moth Pony? I think it so. It says, My June OC, Rainboa, the Rainbow Princess. And that's oh. all. There are no questions. This is by Limey18. Clearly. It's, uh, it's a good horse. I love how oh, much the main it. tail looks like cotton candy. <laughs> mm. The shape of the tail... I don't know where it's going, um, but it seems to me like it's not like a poop tail. It's 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 clearly going this way. What is up? It's almost the too high though. Yeah, so like... that's what I was gonna say. I was I figure out why my pen is being weird. Um, oh no! <laughs> it's going up this way, but and then assumingly like, collecting over here, which it's it's like a little bit too high. If we follow the uh, where the neck is supposed to be. Okay, so, yeah. so okay, so I I try to I was trying to break down what because the character's white, uh, it, the coat color blends in with the negative space. It was creating some optical illusions here that, uh, like hard edge this wing has was throwing off my brain. So there we go. Uh, so the neck is like hereish, and what goes around this, uh, sort of sort of away, something like that, around to the body. Uh, ish. So the base of the spine is around here. 
boop, 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 boop. And so the tail is coming out that way. Uh, but I think around this way would be a bit better. Uh, mostly because it's also creating a tangent. So we see the, the feathers, they're coming in this way, and they're also, the, the tails come out this way. So it basically creates this point. So what looks at first is like the tails coming out of this, out of the butt here. And then there's just this extra spike on top that's going on top of the wing. But that seems to not be what you've done. Uh, so a tangent is basically any way where intersecting lines can create a, an optical illusion that confuses the readability of a picture in a way that you don't really want. Because it can trick the brain to thinking stuff that we don't want it to think. So we just want to make sure that the tail has this uh, this way of being read as the sort of lovely cotton candy mess it is. You might want to, uh, I mean, this is more down to character design, but I would I would break up how some of these uh, curls work so it's not so uniform, because the hair is often chaotic, chaotic and fun, and you want to make sure it has that kind of uh, inconsistent energy. It's up to you if you really want it to, to uh, be the way you draw it. I didn't do a very good job of improving it anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm just I'm just messing about with like the having like a shoulder, having like this top of the arm sort of flare out, so there's a bit of shoulder here, and messing about with the sort of wing connection points and all that sort of stuff. I li I like the um the coloring style, how it's like almost like sort of Celestia's hair. It like uh, uh it doesn't really sort of conform to the curly. The, the colors don't really conform to the like curly stuff. It's just like all goes all throughout. It's cool. Yeah, in in general, good little horse. Mm. You can you can make the ears bigger. I'm 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 always a big fan of really big ears, but you can definitely mm -hmm. make the ears a bit bigger. Just bush, go crazy. <laughs> I'd almost want to suggest two to make the body a bit longer, just to let everything breathe, so you have more space for the wings and the legs coming out of either side. Um, just gives gives a little bit more. Cause it just is so so much is going on in this little short space, and also the tail is in behind there. That way, if you like pull the legs out a little bit, they have just a nice space to exist. As well as the wings have a nice space to exist, and then your arms—it doesn't feel also crowded. But if you want a short bean body on long legs, that's also a totally fine call. Mm. Especially for traditional stuff, this is good. Mm. Shall we move on to the next one? Yeah. Good horse. Feel free to check more stuff for this in future and add some questions if you have anything specific you want us to focus on. Absolutely. Too. So, which one? We'll go over to the right. Yes. Ratchet. And I'll pull up Ratchet over here. What a and movie. Ratchet is by the Oreo Bandit. Um, they say, I'm finally starting to get better with my line art. Meet my OC Ratchet. No questions. This is a great. I love the uh, like, robot yeah. pony designs. They're always so interesting. <laughs> Let me switch um, that off and do this. So I'm glad you're being creative with OCs. I love seeing cool OC designs. Uh, especially robots. There's so many different ways that you can sort of be creative with robots. So I've, do I've designed one before and it at, f at first it is pretty hard to like figure out how to be interesting with like making machinery that looks like a, a pony. But 
I like the way you did the who's. Those are very interesting. Mm. And sort of don't, don't be... Ways. Don't be too scared to like uh, have some sort of like difference, like uh, here, have it like kick out a little bit, or like here to have it like kick out a little bit, because that'll um, that'll help it like feel like they're like separate pieces a little bit, and uh, might be sort of a bit more of the effects you're going for. Mm hmm. And that ex also extends over here, definitely for like the helmet up top, um, the way it wraps around the horn. Just have it kick out just that little itty bit and it just adds that extra dimension like it's sitting on the horse instead of like uh, painted on the horse. Hmm, exactly. Yeah, I'd definitely say your line quality is feeling super nice. If I could give one recommendation to even help your lines more... It feels like it feels like you're not too confident with your lines yet. Like you're taking very steady uh, strokes and moving it up. Like it, we see, we look at the uh, ear over here, and it feels like rather bumpy. And you know, the shapes are kind of it, it's not like a clean line. Um, something I can really recommend is to swoosh a bit more. Now, swooshing is very much just like boop. That's a swoosh. That's a swoosh. That's a swoosh. This is a swoosh swoosh and the idea is to try like for this ear here try to do that one stroke just under like 0. 0.0001 second just and if that doesn't work you always have the undo button god bless you know digital it's it's great also to train on traditional so you don't have to hit undo as much but <laughs> have, there's nothing wrong with just like oh no that's not right oh that's not right okay ah, that's feeling better and then yeah, okay that's I like 90 percent of my art <laughs> I want it to be straighter here and like, oh, I don't quite like how it connects. So I can just erase a little bit of the top and then boop, boop, finish the connection. And you can, you can just get a little bit more confidence in those lines, a little less shakiness. And the hmm. same with the tail. The tail is a hard one, but fun. And you just, you know, you keep practicing like the swish, the big swish there. And say you like how the first part came out. You don't like how the second part came out. You erase that second part, and then you go in and do it in two strokes, and just try to connect them all as best you can. We, yeah. we always we we always talk about um, sort of you know using your shoulder and drawing from your elbow and that sort of stuff. And digital, you have you have the best advantage in the world. So at the moment, my screen goes from here to here, and so uh, my my tablet goes from here to here. And so if I do like. A stroke across my like full tablet, boom! I can do that. But if I only want to sort of do a stroke here, for example, I can zoom in and zoom way in and zoom way in. And now my tablet is like that full thing. That's that's like I've zoomed in, so like that's the only thing showing on my screen. And now I can do like the same full stroke with my uh, with my shoulder and my elbow and stuff, and boom. So always, you can always zoom in and, you know, very helpful. Um, well, Pixie's working on the helmet there. There's actually something I wanted to bring up with the eye. So... Something I feel like that gets missed out a lot on with side views is you have to remember the eye. I, I know horses are a little different. You do see more of the side eye, but still, horses still have like a side of the face. Um, and you got to be careful not to encroach on that side. You have to let that exist. I know Pixie, Pixie is the one who brought the side face into all of our worlds and preaches it. And I am so appreciative of that. It really helps with the structure and just 3D thinking of the head itself. Um, so to treat the head more like a, a head, the 3D object that it is, if you can just draw a circle to kind of identify on on your regular, like if I draw the ball here, right, here is a three-fourths pony. I do my cross section, and if I want to know where my eyes are going, well, I need to remember it. There's a side here. This, this right here is the side of the head. So I know, okay, so I should make my eyes not encroach past that line so I can get a better feeling. A better 3d shape same can go for a side view 
um, so my eyes don't go all the way back here and it's like, oh, hello, I'm looking at you. Here's my pony. You can bring it forward a bit. And that way you still have the side with the ear. Yeah. Happy little pony. <laughs> we love happy little parents. So just let, let that side of the head exist so you can have the full breath of the face. Yes. And it also works for more horsey heads. Like, you just different shape, same tune. Mm. It's it's one of those cases as well with the when you're looking side on with the eye where it feels weird compressing it and, like, drawing the eye like this. But the cool thing is that it will make your sort of head feel more 3D. It'll, it'll make it feel like it's, like, more... Uh, properly defined as like a 3D shape sort of thing. So it, it might feel weird, but you know, look look at a few references, give it a shot, and uh, sort of see how it feels. Like this. Look at this. It's it's like oh my god, it's 3D. Ah, boo boo boo. Ball. I'm 3D. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't do too much with the with the helmet sort of stuff. Just um, made the shapes a little bit bigger. So just you know, you can you can like make the in, instead of like you know having this like a lot of like normal sort of stuff and then boom, just just you can just make it a little bit bigger. So it'll sort of you can probably even like kick it up, pick up these like. Uh, things a bit so that there's like a boom, boom. I don't know why but this one I'm here the way the way the cir the way that just like the face is laid out and the circle is like I, f I just feel like that's like a really cute uh design for a robot pony's head as well if they physically have like <laughs> maybe like a slight a slightly different color uh panel on the side of the head that uh, like connected right up to the eye I don't know it just looks cute <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> or maybe just like sort of like a Swish, like a little in a bit. I don't know. It just like it just, <laughs> just like part of the face is like separated. I don't know. It just looks cute for like a robot heart, so you could try doing that. <laughs> Makes me want to design another robot pony. Yes, you know. <laughs> oh, in honor of Zom Zom, uh, yeah, one other thing. Down a little bit. Draw the other ear. We can see it. It'd be the <gasps> same height. We'd see it on the other yeah. side of the mohawk. So don't forget. Don't forget they got the two ears. We got to channel the zombie and his his nibbly ear obsession. And same with the ears, you also would see like just a bit of the other wing, <laughs> just a bit, a smidgen. They got yeah, two. Always, they got two of all those things. It's always good to think about those three D spaces, even even in a case where it's uh, where it's like your side view. The ponies aren't completely symmetrical, and they're gonna like like how you've got the legs in different poses. We would have been talking about the legs if you decided to put the legs in the same pose and not had them uh, be visible. We would have told you to do a pose like this. Um, so it's doing the same thing with the wings and the ears and stuff as well, like just spacing them slightly. With with the ear shapes, I was like having like a little bit of like a kick out of the bottom here. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the little like sort of pudgy bit at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are so many ways to do ears, although I will say these ones sort of look a bit like organic. I don't know if this is an android more than it is a uh, a robot or a cyborg more than an android, rather. Um, mm. parts I think of I them can answer real. that. <gasps> oh, uh, she's a cyborg. Ah, so it is it's a, a real zebra. Zeb oh, it's got a mohawk like a. Oh, that's that's also what the the guards have. Okay. Let's see. But yeah, oh, I'm still zoomed in. I think there we go. I was zooming on the ear so we could see what you're doing. <laughs> I'm just drawing fun ears. There's so many ways to draw ears. There's just like the ears are great. They can be pudgy or thin. I I I like to bounce between making like super thin horse-like ears because they're just fun and tall. Mm. And I also like doing more like built out. Kind of like dimensional ears that. 
Yeah, I don't know what I did to build up my original ear design, but then I was like, I'm gonna do the movie style now, and then after a while I was like, I'm gonna, I wanna use my old style again, but like, I, it just feels outdated now. How can I combine these? What do I want out of an ear? I just brainstormed for ages and just, I, I, I drew out both styles of ear on, uh, on a piece of paper, and then I, I went through like combining them in different ways and creating different experiments, and there was one I really liked, and I just circled it. And I was like, this, this is not gonna be my ears now. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sort of refined that over time, but it's great to experiment. Like these ones over here are closer to how uh, our friend Cordosan does them, which is just super lovely and adorable. There's lots of lots of fun. Variety is the spice of life. Yeah, <laughs> and there's so many like lovely styles to choose from, and ponies in general. You could have like tall and lean like these ones, or you could have them like short and stocky or like shapely. There's 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 so many different ways to do them. The bodies, the legs, the heads, the necks, the eyes. Yep. It's one of the most creative like species. And I don't know. Ears um, and eyes are just some of the most Yeah. And that's so changeable good things. I always and, and say the like hooves. Yeah. I really love these hooves. Absolutely. I, love them. I know, right? I said that at the beginning, but I love them. They they look they look I, they look mechanical. I don't know if that's part of their biology. The the back legs mm. it certainly looks like the whole leg from Ankle down is uh, is part of robotic, but they look sort of like a segmented metal plates. So mm -hmm. it's cool. Um, it might just be that it's like the shoe, the armor shoe. Um, yeah, I, I always said like uh, I feel like ponies can just not have like necessarily mind control, but certainly be able to communicate non-verbally very easily because like not only do they have just like super big, super expressive eyes that they can like use like the iris dilation stuff as like a part of it, as well as the eye movements, the sort of bend and stretch of them and the eyebrows and everything, but also the ears, how they're placed, where they're moving, where they're moving from, how fast they're moving, like what angles they're moving in. You can just d display so much body language. <laughs> They could just, I, I really want to animate a scene where two ponies are just having a conversation. There's like subtitles, but they're just making faces at each other. <laughs> because yeah, I feel cute. like it's possible. Anyway, I hope we gave you lots of helpful rambling. Yep. Good horse. Hope to see more. Yeah. Good horse. Track us more horse. If you want. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> so, right. moving on. To the rainbow. The next rainbow. Yeah. Let's continue in the natural. Oops, and, uh, my tablet screen is not this. Let's continue in the natural Western world reading direction and go over here <laughs> to the right. I love the little uh, pony town thing. It's been so long since I go. I've been on Pony Town where it was just like grass and trees and dirt paths, and like now there's like so every time someone shares a screenshot, I'm like, wait, there's this, there's that, there's like houses. Yeah, there's apparently boats, you there's... can like customize an entire island now. I know that's so crazy. I just I just know when it was just like an empty field and you just run around and talk to your friends. Now you can have like sitting animations and flying animations. It's like what? <laughs> and like I think there was already boops when I went in, but <laughs> that was the only thing. <laughs> so, so this is by Popcorn Two O Two, and this they say I draw my Ponytown OC Rainbow Light. Um, no questions, but I did want to just uh, throw out a message to you, Pop. Um, we, we see you've been posting a lot on the subreddit, which is great, but try to keep your posts to at least one picture a day. And, um... At most. At most, yes. And, yeah, if, if you feel like you're not getting critique, we do try to do a roundup at least one picture at the end of the week, but, um, it usually getting critique at least once a week is enough. So if, if you're posting a bunch and a bunch and a bunch, it's not really uh, enough time to learn anything between drawings. Um, of course, you can do experiments between drawings, but to really grasp, we would just be repeating ourselves every day for each new post. So you could try posting once a week, like pick your best picture you did that week and then post that and get critique. And that way it, it helps have a steadier system to get critique. And that way you don't, you know, just keep getting the same, the, the same stuff said over and over again. But um, yeah, yeah, that's that's. If if you want a place to just like share stuff you've drawn and all that sort of stuff, join join our Discord. We have an art channel on there, and you can just chuck as yeah. many pictures as you want on there. Yeah, that's exactly what I forgot. Thank you. <laughs> My question is, how does this pony look? Answer fabulous. Ha ha ha. Simply They don't have fabulous. eyes. They need those those peepers. But that's just part of the design. I get it. I'm just uh, curious uh, as to apparently, how they... apparently you're incorrect. 
Oh. Uh -huh. Apparently you're incorrect. I don't need eyes. <laughs> they have like. They just need to sonar. be be rainbow. Yep, exactly. They see with the rainbows, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I think I'll, I'll follow up with one other question for you. Uh, what questions do you have? Um, it's really a great idea for when you're trying to get better at art to have questions like what exactly you're struggling with. Because when you're starting out, it's really easy to just be like, I need help with everything. And while it may feel like it's true, it's it's really good to start on and pinpoint like what do you, what is the specific thing you're struggling with? Um, so I'll throw that at you for next time. But for this time, um, I believe, I think it's some of your other posts, you were looking at anatomy help, so. Mm. Yeah. I think the the neck is always an interesting place, like seeing how the neck connects to the head and to the body and all that sort of stuff. If you look up here, you see like a masterfully drawn body and it's amazing and it's, it's the best. Uh, for the sort of main body, what I tend to think of is I tend to think of like a uh, uh, a wing, like sort of like a normal kind of a wing shape, but I'll use that shape for sort of the whole body and then have like the, the neck sort of connect up here and all that sort of stuff and kind of sort of use the wing shape in that sort of way. And then you can like have the uh, the, the, the thigh in there somewhere, something like that. And then have the uh, sort of at the front, have the shoulder which goes down into sort of the leggy sort of thing, some something like that. This is a badly drawn horse. I'm bad at drawing horses from the side, but something like that, roughly, kind of, sort of. Look look at um, this front leg and this sort of shoulder kind of area. These, these two are connected. And so what you can do is you can remove the line between them and it helps it look like those are connected. And same, same kind of thing over here with this uh, leg that's in front and this sort of thigh area. You can remove the lines there. And it looks like those two areas are sort of uh, connected in one one thing. Mm -hmm. And I also raised this uh, this tail up a little bit, and just just made it a little bit more full to uh, match the uh, sort of main thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah. good to watch out for that tail placement. Right now, it's a little low. You if you just follow the spine here, it'll my pop up just drew... above the butt. I might want to do the spine in orange and where it ends, so you can you can see what I mean by that. So mm. it's important to remember that. Yeah. I would look at like the leg, uh, sort of bone joints as well. Um, I didn't draw them perfectly in mine, but we've got like the mm. the rear body. Uh, I'll move the camera down in a second. <gasps> yeah, I keep losing my cursor whenever I go, try to go to a different screen. There we go. More space. <laughs> so the the leg is sort of going to go like this. Actually, just a different color. For the actual flesh. I mean, this is this is obviously like leg lifted, not pressing on the floor. Um, but just an example of the leg sort of bending. Not perfectly, because I'm actually pretty bad at rear legs. Particularly, mm. but. Uh, to show you how it's it's it it's not like a cone that's going to go like this there is a sort of structure to it which i can see you're trying to trying to do just uh i would look up references towards a uh, sort of uh, pony anatomy tutorial so you can find things on sort of like the leg structures the bone structures and things yeah yeah Uh, speaking of, uh, if you go on our subreddit, on the sidebar there, there's a bunch of tutorials, there's a, there's a link, uh, let me go to what it's specifically called. Okay, so under our sidebar, uh, if you scroll down past the uh, description and 
the joining Reddit. There's something, oh, there's a box called details and there's going to be in big white letters guides. The beginner's guides has a bunch of really, really, really great tutorials in it. And I highly recommend using those uh, paired with references. And I believe there's even a tutorial on how to use references in there. So if that's also a little confusing still, I highly recommend that one as well. I know it's helped me a bunch. It's helped a lot of people. So if you really want to work on this stuff, I highly recommend exploring that link and all the links inside of it. So just beginner tutorials. It's right there on our sidebar in our subreddit. Or if you do end up in our Discord, there's an entire tutorial channel you can look through with a bunch of more information. So we try we try to have a bunch of information ready for people. Mm. Look at his squiggle. He's good squiggle. Squiggle, squiggle is fun. Yeah, Little keeping the sort of cute. keeping the drawings like loose and expressive like this is a really good idea. It, it it's hard to break into that mindset out of like just like putting lines down and being very structured, but uh, it, well, Pixie's drawing right now is almost like a fusion of like under sketching and just like actually drawing. <laughs> like he's it's it's just freestyling. It. It's cute. That's what it is. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> this, this, yeah. This this is what uh, happens when when you do a lot of life drawing. As I said, uh, Pixie is the master of the fist of the messy art style, or whatever it was. I said, <laughs> <laughs> loose and expressive is is a good thing. It's a good. I I always think like you don't have to stay there. Like Pixie loves drawing like expressively and just like just drawing the, these blobs that resemble life because like he just said he's done a lot of life drawing it's and that's great uh you don't have to do that uh necessarily but i think especially when you're starting out learning to uh learning to draw in a way that is this sort of like loose and expressive can be very very helpful especially when you're just uh starting out because it gets your it gets you a different perspective of how to build up art and that's very very important um because it helps you to have different different tools in your toolbox if that makes sense uh, so if you know how to draw structured and strict that's great learning to draw loose and free can uh, just give you a different perspective and then then you know where di what different directions you can take learning and it'll help you grow it might just help you develop some more interesting natural poses not that there's anything wrong with the pose you've drawn specifically it's just like a casual walking pose that makes sense uh, but it's always mm -hmm. fun to experiment with different things and what you can do yeah. Exactly. Well, with that, shall we move on to the next one? Yes, yes. I'm it's Spitfire. To... <laughs> it's Spitfire. Yay. Where is this? This. The Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom. Apple Bloom. I was <laughs> almost tempted Blum. to like restart the stream to see if it like because it's got like a big delay, but then we'd end up cutting stuff out. So I, <laughs> I'd rather wait. Just like let it be behind us. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's fine. The recording we, we would be fine either way, yeah. but anywho's appel, appel, um, appel. All right, so this is for the uh, art of uh, the NATG, which is the art uh -huh. newbie artist training ground, happening on Equestria Daily. If anyone's I've watching, never, never apparently it's really fun. One. I did it. Th that's how I started drawing pony. I joined yeah, I the very you first us this one. Once. Um, that's how you made your OC in. back when her like. <laughs> Very different yeah. appearance. <laughs> the 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 debut of the like now edgy... very different pony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um I mean, we all did. <laughs> they they as followed. So this was submission for the first day. Uh drawing a pony standing, drawing a pony drawing a static pony. That was the prompt. Um, uh -huh. they say, having required experience with digital drawing tools since I last took part, I decided to use them for my submissions for this year. Even so, the initial sketches started out with the traditional medium pencil I have come to love. It's my hope that this year's NATG will allow me to figure out how to make the drawing process more efficient. That way, I can start experimenting with art style. The shading on her foreground hind legs feels contradictory. The hind leg itself looks too narrow above her knee, and Apple Bloom's yeah. left eye, right from our perspective, is not rounded enough towards the left. Yeah, so I think cell shading can be very tricky because you're trying to express three-dimensional round shapes with two-dimensional on or off shading, and it it's sort of contradictory. But if you can get the shapes to look right, then it oop, I keep accidentally minimizing my window. Then it can be very very good. Um, two things. I mean, firstly, on the the hind shading, yeah, it's it's difficult. I think what 
uh, the problem is, I don't necessarily know what the solution is, but the problem is that you've got like this rounded shading going in sort of like the opposite direction from, like it's, you've got like a round object but then like another round shading and it's not quite showing the the way the light should be moving properly. Um, uh, I'm not as good at social I'm sure someone else will will give a really good uh, draw over in a sec. Um, what I would say uh, is it's fine to do this color while you're doing uh, the shading, getting the groundwork done, because you can see it clearly, and that's great. It's helpful. Uh, it, what might make it look uh, more natural to you is after you've done sort of putting the base groundwork of the uh, cell shading down is to try and lighten the color a little bit. To, a little bit closer towards the body color, just soften the shading because it's very thick and very contrasting and usually this sort of shading is used if a character has a very bright very contrasting light on them uh, so think of in the show there, there are scenes sometimes when like a character will have like a very dramatic light on them and it casts like heavy shadows over their body uh, and that's you know you that's to show that there's a very singular very powerful light source whereas uh, having softer shading implies a more diffused natural light source so if you have your shading very thick like this and the color is a little on the dark side then it will it makes it look very sort of bold and obvious and like we've got like a strong lamp uh blasting on her whereas you might want to lower it a little bit to just make it make it feel like it's not in the forefront of our minds because right now when we look at this picture most of what we see i think our eyes are drawn to like her face and mane and like the you know the bright obvious colors of her mane first uh but then after that it's drawn to the shading uh, and if it was lighter a little bit, then it would be less obvious. And sometimes something can be there doing its job in the background and not be in the forefront of our minds and still be doing a good job. Not not everything you do has to be uh, like super obvious, if that makes sense. Mm. So, I think I think for the for the shading up here, I've done a little thing. So like mm -hmm. if if you if you color pick between uh, this picture, uh, sorry this this color, which is the fur color. And this color, which is the shading color you've used, the hue is pretty much the same. Whereas when when you're like doing real uh, sort of shading and that sort of stuff, normally between the lit and the shade, the shadowed areas, there's going to be like a bit of a hue shift. Yeah. So here, what I've done is I've started off with the with the same color, same fur color, and then for this one, I've shifted the hue towards orange and what that does is it sort of it makes the shadows feel a bit warmer and it makes it sort of uh feel a little bit more natural that's so actually that's, what i was doing as well <laughs> yeah that's that's kind, kind of why there's a difference between that uh which kind of looks like uh like a concrete block or something like that that's painted this yellow and this which uh feels a little bit more like a a, a uh organic sort of a thing painted that way yeah, this might work a little bit better for the, the body, uh, even if it really should just be like one single thing. Sometimes breaking up the thigh and the leg can help to make that shading work. I think remembering mm. that the leg is a rounded cylinder can help with the with the leg shading a lot. If if you look at... Um, oh, also, this... just real quick, I, I, okay. uh, I left these back legs and the inner part of the main here a slightly darker version of the color that I used on the more foreground parts like this and this because it uh, it's slightly further away and more in the dark and it helps to just layer and separate the three-dimensional space of the image a little bit especially this one so with with this particular area let me, let me change there this particular area uh, something to keep in mind when you're doing like shading all around is that uh, parts Two parts that touch each other should be like the same. Like if if one is lit, they both should be lit. If one is shadowed, they both should be shadowed. As you sort of go underneath here, there is like the shadowed leg, and then the lit up sort of underneath of underneath of here. And so what uh, Zai is doing there with the adding the shall shadows up here will sort of help with that. In in general, with like a lot of the um, other blue line work changes I did. Uh, it's mostly just like uh, fairly standard stuff. So kind of bringing this uh, this cheek in a little bit. So 
my god. Oh, I'm on the eraser. Cool. Yeah, kind, kind of just bring in the cheek in a little bit so that it's like uh, pudges out up mm -hmm. here and then sort of in and out again and all that sort of stuff. I used to love um, doing that, like having the sort of chin bend around the mouth, and I tried it recently and it, just, it didn't work as well as I used to do it, but it is definitely worth worth doing. Mm. I, I sort of pulled this, this eye over to the left a little bit, just thinking about the sort of midline of everything and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. One and other... just, just like some other tweaks, but to be honest, it looks, yeah, looks yeah. pretty good. One other final thing about the the shading uh, is is hanging shadows because so most of the cell shading is the shading on an object just to define its shape but there are shadows here which I use shade and shadow differently shadow to me is something that is cast and so that would be here and here which or you the way you've done it uh, in the base picture is something like that but that makes it look kind of iffy because so if this look, looking at this the way we've done the shadow on the hair here I haven't changed much of it in how I draw over it this uh the shadow is bigger than the object which means there must be a light very close to the object shining like this because it's casting a shadow all around the object going outwards like this whereas if you want the impression of an object that's hanging uh you want to sort of push oops I can't undo that blue line now so <laughs> that's a mistake Let's just uh, see if we can get rid of that. Uh, nope, I, what is even happening? I don't, I don't know what's happening there. Um, you want to sort of imply the sort of distance of an object. So you, you'd actually like pull it down a little bit and as if you were sort of offsetting the shape of the object a little bit. Think about how shadows are cast from people when they're standing on the ground. Like when you're walking and there's like the sun or a street lamp or something behind you, how it casts your shadow. Your shadow isn't just like a bigger version of your shape going out around you it's actually sort of uh spreading onto the ground in a certain direction and so if the light was like really far behind her or you're still in front but just further off to the right uh going this sort of direction um then the shadow would be even higher and it would actually bend around the body uh, but that's not necessarily what you're doing right now it looks like the shading's pretty sort of on in the front so i'd just uh just change how the shadows are hanging from the hair as well is the other thing but yeah uh, i hope uh, some of our ramblings have have helped <laughs> you might have to rewatch it to take some of it in i'm sorry it's anyone wonderful. else <laughs> I yeah think we're good to move on to the next image yeah cool. super cool. super good sketchy drawing -y, all that sort of stuff super yeah. marine does some good stuff I hope I hope the artist training ground's fun for you and you learn a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Fight. Gambate. <laughs> Gambate. Moving on. That was a good classic oh, MOPD so critique. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, look, sketches. I do love some some drawings. These are some very lovely drawings. Who are they by? This is I love by these. Jack a Yote. Uh they say work pony doodles, no questions. Heck yeah. We love it if you give us some direction as to what's troubling you about a picture. Helps us to know how we can help the best. Yeah. Question's good. Okay. There we go. So, I mean, I, I, I super love these because it's everything that we tell people to do. You know, it's like dynamic, diverse poses. You've got like different angles of the head. You've got like clear under sketching, expressive, like messy sketches, just like building up the shape without worrying too much about getting it accurate. Like it, it's, it's super lovely to see. Mm. Yeah. To, to be honest, these are the kind of sketches that I like doing as well. And they're really good. You know, it's almost hard to critique these because I, I don't quite like critiquing sketch work because it's just such a preliminary thing um and it's yeah. very exploratory and whatnot if there's but... anything super wrong about the anatomy but you know uh, this is honestly yeah. so good that i, I feel like just nitpicking <laughs> yep this this is full nitpick i'm i'm just messing about with the with the muzzles mm -hmm. a little bit i i really like this i really love these so. and kidding work here i just moved over a little bit because the the blue circle i placed was sort of more to me how the where the kiri mark is placed on the thigh uh although you can sort of stretch it downwards a little bit um mm -hmm. the rain cloud I, I, 
Uh, I'll draw it to the side because uh, it'll be probably easier. But having like diverse inconsistencies with GD Mark is good. So having these uh, sort of the different puffs be at different angles and then having it not necessarily have a flat surface, especially if it can go down a little bit like this, is useful. Uh, just some, something to make the cloud have some some shape to it uh, that's different. And then you can have the raindrops be like maybe actual raindrop shapes. And then B, I mean, obviously, this is very small, so not uh, not uh, claiming you're not, uh, that's not what we have in mind, but breaking them up like this might be a good idea. Uh, just, I, I think I cutie, marks, cutie marks like that, especially when you look at like the main six and stuff, often have those, like, especially in like threes, where like objects are, are like sort of placed at different angles and different, uh, or different like sizes. Mm. Just so it doesn't look too stuck. I I love the uh, the wings. The wings are super. Good. Yeah, they're super good. I'm I'm always I'm I'm always a big fan of the uh, with with the ears like this, with just doing uh, this kind of a shape, and then boom. I like it. I think something oh, that's, overall. That's oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, no, go. Um, I I think something overall uh, overall just to pay attention to is proportioning. Um, some, uh, some stuff is a little, uh, which is fine if this is like, you know, you're trying different stuff in this sketch page, but if you're doing this as like a, a sketch page of the same pony, just, you know, doing different angles and poses and stuff, just be very careful of the proportioning. I know we lose the head and the body over here become two different sizes compared to everything else you've drawn here. Not saying that they all need to be the same physical size, but in comparison to the proportions of each other. We get a real big chest here with a real tiny head. Um, and the same goes for muzzle shape. Um, just like, again, super nitpicky, but like to kind of learn that consistency of when you're spinning the head around, how to keep that muzzle shape consistent as well as the side and the proportions and all that. Um, and stuff like where the limbs come out, just be careful uh, that especially this feels, this feels like a side view to me. Um, I could be wrong. Um, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, where, like, these legs are coming out, you're basically telling me that they're coming out at a uh, angle here instead of, yeah. you know, How I see it is, I, only, I see it almost like a third quarter, but with the head tilted to the side a bit. Which, if that's what you wanted to do, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. I, I, I think I think it's, it's uh, you know... Uh kind of kind of like tilts off to to this sort of a way but mm -hmm. the the side profile head on this makes it look a little bit strange mm -hmm. yeah when 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 you're doing when you're doing such a uh, such a twisty interesting kind of like a body like this um i think you might need to sort of express it uh, a little bit more in the head by like maybe uh showing the twist off a little bit more or like looking at these sort of like neck necklines or something like that to like sort of show what's going on or something like that i don't know yeah so some form of twist in the head or the neck would be very helpful in that situation neck neck twists are so hard to show off yeah it's funny because I mean, like, sometimes the... all it takes is that like little extra line that pops out the side yeah i was gonna say like, like the muscle definition can sometimes help with that a lot <laughs> I, I really like your ears. Your ears are uh, sort of mm -hmm. well defined for that kind of like, especially like these ones for that like sort of wolfy kind of like back ear shape. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, this is like mostly nitpicky because you're uh, <laughs> clearly a pretty yeah. pretty good artist. I love the tail mm -hmm. they have because it's kind of like a cool like dragony tail with like the puff of fur on the end. It's interesting. Yeah, I love the uh, sort of lines of yeah. action going through these and all that. Yeah. This one could definitely be well, like improved the sort of like the the head to tail like line of action there, and so like brought the neck out a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if you were actually yeah, with, with trying this... to use a line of action or if it was accidental, but <laughs> it's good. With with this one, I switched around the legs because uh, uh, I felt like it's a. Uh, more interesting kind of like a pose. I don't know. Oh, and when um when you do have this sort of like hips going off in like this kind of a thing, 
I always find it helpful to sort of cut off the sort of top there and do that sort of thing. But that's that's just me with my how I construct horses and other horse adjacent things like this. Oh no, they're, they're fading away. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we have anything else we want to bring up with this one or? No, I think that's it. Great job, and we hope to see more. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. If uh, if cool. you want to, yeah, if <laughs> if there's anything on the subreddit that uh, looks interesting, feel free to throw in a critique on that one as well, because clearly uh, we have a lot of knowledge and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, moving on. The next rainbow next rainbow ah. ah i'm trying to i'm trying to move the canvas it switched to zooming sorry <laughs> i was doing so well with my like nice uh, panning shots <laughs> there is, we go. is this the same same character as up there it is indeed the same character but different artists there was a bit of an art gifting happening ah um, okay so that's, that's why i was confused okay yeah <laughs> so this is by las uh lal's moon uh, last, oh, sorry, Lal Moo, the cow Moo, um, and this is Limey's OC Rainboa. No questions. Ask questions, people, please. We we would like to help you, but we need we need guidance ourselves. If you have yeah struggles with something, it's it's no use us going off about the shading if uh, if you're more interested in the anatomy stuff. Who that? True I do gotta say first off the whatever you're using to put down color it looks like a mixture of watercolor and pencils correct me if I'm wrong but it's it's so lovely and vibrant you definitely know how to get that color to stick on there and really shine so props mm. to that technique Yeah, I think I think the head is the head is pretty big. You could probably reduce that a few sizes. This this is um one of those sort of proportioning things where uh uh under sketching is can can be really useful. Yeah. I do love all the flowy shapes in this one. Like the little bits for like the tufts of fur. Yeah, those especially like around here and here. And yeah, that's what I was looking at. It, it really feels nice because nice it's sort of like the the coat sort of reminds me of like a rain cloud, like like a fluffy rain cloud that's sort of t uh, a cloud that's turning into a rain cloud, and the hooves are like wet, and they're sort of like splooshing. Mm. It's interesting. Around here, it's pretty. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to sort of read. You could probably um, sort of indicate more that these two. Bits are like kind of connected or something like that by like maybe yeah. having that sort of come up a little bit. Because the, cause the way the way it is, oops, no, wrong window. It sort of comes up. Aggie, please. I know. <laughs> Trying to, to on the right layer. Wait, let me switch. Uh, it sort of like goes up like this and then into the body, and so it, it kind of creates this like separated shape. But that's not the case. It's 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 all like one thigh here like this but just like with fluff but that fluff is colored so it's uh you can sort of fade towards it i think that might have a nicer effect defining yeah, it um, giving, giving that a bit of a shot yeah breaking it up yeah. a little bit like pixie's doing helps
we're lucky on digital that we can just grab things and move them around. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just shrinking the head a little bit helps. I'll erase that for now. Yeah, messing around with the wing shape would be cool. Some something that can be uh, really interesting is like digging into like um, actual kind of like bird anatomy and like bird wings and that sort of stuff, and learning the different like parts of bird wings, because that that can help you like sort of create a lot of interesting differences in terms of like the types of feathers that you're using around the place. Yeah, and then you can also get like uh, a little bit more flowy joints. Like um, even even the MLP ponies don't just go like that. Have that L bar. They they have a more like zip zip zip, right? Yeah. No, I yeah. guess well, MLP ponies I guess really just have that one line. But they do when they're flying still follow the idea that the bird wing has, you know, connects to the shoulder here. There's a bone here. And there's a bone out here, and then there's a littler bone that pokes out. But overall, the shape something akin to that. This is just messily done sideways. Why am I drawing sideways? It, it's it's right side up for you, but my screen's sideways. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Just looking at bird references and getting the wings a little more. I've, I've got like uh, anatomy. Yeah, I've I've got like probably like six or seven pages in my like sketchbook where I just like went through uh, uh, just a big long anatomy page about feathers and how they're constructed and how they're created and how they're assembled mm. on the wing and. It's it's really fun when you can like dig into stuff like that. Mm. Exciting. That's when you like jump it. Try. Yeah. For some reason, talking about sketching and a sketchbook and and using references reminded me of like I have a a sketchbook somewhere which has like a little pocket at the back, uh, which I got for like a class I was doing. But I liked it so much I went off and got another one just for myself because it's like it, it's just like a normal like drawing book, but it has like a little pocket at the back and just like how the paper is folded like it's 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 designed to be like a little little sort of fold out bit and you and i just i printed out a whole bunch of like references of stuff and just stuck them in there at the back of the sketchbook so it has like a little little pocket for references at the back of the sketchbook i, <laughs> I really like that anything else on this picture no great job at least not at the moment I think we gave enough to chew on I, for now. The only thing, only one thing, I was sort of looking at the rainbow because it seems to me like you, uh, sort of like drew this here. And it's the way it's sort of curving. There we go. Doesn't make it look like it necessarily matches up with this. It looks like it sort of goes like this, which is obviously a bit wonky. Um, which that can happen, especially when doing painting. Uh, but also I think what's mainly throwing off my mind, I mean, I don't think the rainbow does match up, but I think my brain would be convinced it does if it wasn't for the wing having this tangent here. Um, so the wing is very similar color to the clouds. So our brain is just like, oh, here's all this white and doesn't necessarily distinct the actual lines of the wing until we look at it for a bit. And it's like, oh, okay, here's this shape that goes like this. And then this is all white. Um, so... It's 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 a bit. It'd be a bit better if you define the wing bit. So whoever's doing that shading right now, that's very very a very very good start. Uh, blurring some of the clouds in the background might be good as well. I think I have a brush for this. Yeah. So just like making them slightly closer to the sky color, like they're just sort of like faded out. There's some some shadow on the clouds can help to highlight the character by sort of outlining them in a way to sort of pop them out of the picture a little bit more and can help to define the wing, although I would still put a, a sort of like highlighted edge ooh, to the wing just to, because I just darkened the cloud, so <laughs> had the opposite effect now, but um, <laughs> it can uh, it can help to, to pop it out. See, that, actually that's really good, because now we've got the wing sort of quite well defined from the from the clouds. 
But there, there mm. are different ways. My intent wasn't to, so much to darken the clouds as to make them more blue, to sort of fade them away, but it, it just made them look darker. Sometimes we struggle to do things the way we want to on Aki, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. Ten- differentiating like hue, those... differentiating hue and values can be very, very useful as uh, even a traditional piece because it will help to lead the brain a certain way. And now, if my brain is seeing this white fluffy wing, uh, then it's not necessarily going to be so eager to uh, to realize that the rainbow is sort of dipping in like this. This is so hard to draw and going off in this direction, but then coming out here this way. <laughs> mm. It's just tangents one of those minor are like little a things. really weird thing because yeah. like every, everyone will see like different tangents and some might be like uh, really some might really affect like the readability of the picture and some might not matter at all. And all yeah, that sort of it, stuff, it so. definitely. I completely agree. You could you could maybe try and bring the wing outwards a little bit like this. Or maybe not exactly like that. That was terrible, but um, <laughs> uh, sort of thinking about how the wing is in like a three D perspective. Does that make yeah. sense? I can't do this thing. There we go. Yeah. But that's our teacher experiment. <laughs> I hope that helps in some way. Heck yeah, drawing. Good picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish Aggie had more undo stages. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Finally, what do we have Twilight. <gasps> A twillet. A twiggle, a very tired twiggle by Fruzi. Um, one of my recent NA, uh, NATG submissions, the artist training ground. Uh, front views are still a bit foreign to me, so I'd love to get a bit of feedback on this. Um, in case of confusion, she's supposed to be laying down, not flying. This is a top down view. Don't worry, we will struggle with top down views. It's a tricky, it's a tricky one to get all... Or, or, um, the, or a front-facing view, something to say, but also that. <laughs> <laughs> front, uh, just like front-facing feeling foreign, it, it kind of always does. But yeah, I, I agree with what's already being drawn here, making more environment rather than just the papers underneath her will help a lot with the story. Like, visual storytelling is a thing, and you're trying to say Twilight is laying down, and we're sort of looking down at her as she looks up at the ceiling. So... Why is she in a void, you know? Like, drawing... I, I understand that that's, like, you just want to focus on the character, but there are ways you can do that, even with a sort of bed uh, or other environment around. But drawing her in a room, maybe, could work. And if you really... There are ways you can have the background in there, but just really blend it away and make the character pop, most of all, uh, using values and hue uh, to just make everything... That's been the theme of this <laughs> stream. It's on my brain. Um, but you can... Definitely have that environment there uh, to sort of show us immediately, okay, she's like in a room, maybe she's on the grass or like on the floor of her library, but either way, there's going to be something there, even if it's just the floor of her library, there'll be shape, there'll be texture, there'll be colours, there'll be like patterns in the colours, there may be like bits of objects nearby, like bookshelves, like, you know, the bottoms of them anyway. We'll, we'll see things around that aren't just like the papers she's laying on. Like it, it doesn't. It doesn't even need to be much. Like I, I do. Yeah. Like you know, a few, a few lines around, and yeah, you, you get the picture. Yeah, even just from like the basis of that. I find it really helps with making contact with anything is adding a drop shadow because anytime you make contact with something, there will be a shadow. Even like unless you're like fully like there's light in every crevice of wherever you are, there will be some form of shadow. So if you can pick a direction, maybe and just. It'll, it'll almost feel like an outline, but it'll be like a directional outline and just have something underneath her entire body to show that like, oh, she's laying on top of this thing. There's this thing called a drop shadow, which is super easily Googled. Many people have talked about this before, so I won't, you know, go into the science of it all. But having that drop shadow can really make a difference of just telling the idea that, oh, she's on top of something. Maybe try moving the, the right arm out a little bit more. Or her left, I guess. Um, and like spreading the legs. Because if you're like planted down on the floor, you're not necessarily going to be in this uh, strict pose. You're going to be sort of like splayed out a little bit. So differentiating the pose can work as well. Like if I was laying on the ground, I'd definitely have this leg like brought up. And then this one sort of like lacks a little bit further downwards. And you know, she's 
clutching a book, but her other leg can be sort of like strewn out. The wings too, you know, you can, there are ways you can make the wings sort of feel a bit like asymmetrical. To just make them feel a bit lazier, or maybe the other way, I don't know, worth experimenting with. Trying to, trying to like make poses that like feel lazy. Uh, is is really difficult because it's hard to sort of like. Uh, I like the idea of both wings being what, down. Actually, natural. Yeah. Both, both wings being yeah, sort of like work. not not pulled up, but just sort of like being like even though she's laying on the ground and the gravity isn't pulling the wings down, it's it still just sort of feels nice to not have the muscles tensed upwards, but just to have them sort of lax. So like they're not like pulled fully down where they'd be like this, and they're not being pulled fully up where they'd be like this, or. How, how you've got them at the moment, where they're sort of like in a ready to flap stage. There's sort of like four different like places for the wings, and this uh, how I've got mm. them here is is more of a sort of lazy. But it's it's always fun to have like asymmetry in. So oh, my eraser is so not very strong. Uh, so having having one wing sort of like pull up a little bit might might be cool. Um, just it's just about making the asymmetry work in the way it feels right. Maybe since her leg is, is in the way there, this one might be pulled up even more, just to just so that the leg isn't squishing the feathers as much. Because it's kind of like laying right on top of the wing, uh, unless, except for where you've got them in your drawing. Um, but I'm just sort of like looking at the, where the wings start on the back. If we're looking at the pony from, if they would be standing on all fours, the wings we usually do sort of a little bit further back and behind the shoulders towards the top. Uh, and then the wing, the wings are on arms, so they. Oh, that is a terrible colour to be drawing. Uh, the, so if the short, the arm shoulder is here, the wing shoulder will be a bit further around there, then comes sort of like out, joint up, joint or maybe a bit further up, joint, and then you have got like fingers, and feathers, because uh, the arm, the wings are arms. They are arm shapes. So it's, it, that can help go into the posing. And, uh, and if you want help with that, uh, references. References. <laughs> they are so beautiful. References. Also, fun draft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, draft. I got distracted. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> uh, where's the... um, and even if you can't find, I, I know I've brought this up before, even if you can't find a pony reference of this exact specification of them laying on their tummy, or I mean on their back to show their tummy, dogs. Dogs, cats. Yeah. They have similar enough anatomy, especially to the MLP style of pony, where it's not quite an actual horse. They're very much more cat-like in the show, or dog-like than they are horse-like. They do do horse things sometimes, and they like to emphasize the horse-like animations in the show, but for anatomy help and reference purposes, cats, dogs, they're really great. Yeah. Mm. I Can just I realized that Aggie doesn't actually like display the um, the changes to a layer until you like finish those changes. So earlier on when Pixie was like, oh, they're... Oh wait, it's off. He was like, "Oh, it's fading away." I was like, "No." <laughs> he did it all slowly, but you didn't see that because it like wasn't actually moving until I let go. So I just wanted to turn the, I turned the OBS on to just display my whole tablet screen just so I could show you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, looks looks good. When whenever um. It's like front on like this. I I like doing the thing because I'm weird. I like doing the thing of having the the hair over here, but also some hair over here. Yeah. And it, it makes it look like they have a mullet, but that's fine because <laughs> I'm Australian and mullets work in in my country. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, definitely I'm having it splayed out more. I think works, which is what I was sort of trying to do in mine up at the left, the right. God, I can go with directions today. Up to her left. <laughs> I like the I like the little green one that's happening on the on the left as well. Thank you. Ali is always good at drawing. Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> um, excuse me. 
Uh, Always. Mm, I'll, <laughs> yeah, I'll most of to, the time. Uh, I'll have to fact check you people later. Uh, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's fine, but I've already <laughs> fact checked it, and it's true. So, you know. oh. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess I guess you got me. But thank you. <laughs> also, I really just I really just want to draw a pony like splayed out on the grass or something now, because this picture. Yeah, <laughs> it's, Curse it's you, cool you got me to want to draw. <laughs> yeah. I, I did that recently for a commission. It's a challenging pose. It's there's a lot of ways to do it. I, I the the leggies the leggies are the hardest. The, mm. Those. The but you were drawing like characters like interacting with one another as well, which is even more. <laughs> Luckily, they were just laying side by side, and I didn't have to get right. too complicated. But the the back leggies, I think, are the hardest because it's gonna be the least horse like. Because horses just don't, they don't, they mm. don't lay on their back and sprawl out like that. So it's gonna be a little mm. bit of a compromise these between are, anthropomorphizing Yeah, these are anthropomorphic them. characters. Yeah. So, so person who drew this, one of the important things to keep in mind for this pose is how all of this works. And the, the basic shape that you're going to be looking at is something along the lines of like, boom, boom, for the torso, for like the, the torso and the hips sort of area, and then boom and boom for like the thigh stuff. So keep that in mind if you do this sort of pose in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you do need to like look very at uh, some basic references, humans, you know. I very they, much agree with that. You can stand and look in a mirror or look on Google for person standing and you'll see this sort of shape. And it'll be useful when you're doing this kind of... Yeah. Looking at it from the sort of perspective of looking at the belly. How the sort of thing. shapes and the muscles and the flesh sort of sits and overlaps and weighs in one another. It's, it's always a fun thing to reference and learn about. Yeah. I really love how you did the hair over here, Fluffy. Like the, oh, the back. It's really nice. I was like, so trying I to figure it, yeah. out. <laughs> I was just trying to show you like, an heck? example of it. Fluffy, you're not allowed to be that good at hair. It's allowed. It's just allowed. <laughs> Hermine's a little bit like it's it's papery, which sort of helps, but it's it, it I, I prefer characters that have sort of, uh, longer, kind of more like anime like hair because it's really fun to sort of like splay out the the sort of like mess of it. I really like what you've done actually on the left there, Ali. It, I just stole what you did, um, so <laughs> and then you made it better. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes, you did. <laughs> I just sort of threw it on there as an example. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to keep that in mind, right? Like, that even if a character has a certain hairstyle one way, this is definitely a new form of gravity affecting this hairstyle, so it yeah. wouldn't necessarily just hold up like an umbrella. Like, you could do mm -hmm. it. I'm not saying you can't, but if you want to have, you know, that into play. God damn it, I was just imagining her just, like, tilting her head back to look look back at someone or something but like by instead of turning around like just throwing the head all the way back and the mane like flopping back over the head you know i kind of want to draw that as well <laughs> but yeah this is really great work. I, I'm happy to hear you're participating in the artist training ground. I hear a lot of people get a lot out of it, and they have a lot of fun doing it. So just remember to have fun, and you will learn if you let yourself have, have fun. Have fun or else. Fun, <laughs> fun is the true way to get better. It is the yeah. only way. Exactly. exactly. Have, have fun. Or else. Or else we'll come <laughs> and we'll, uh, um, we'll like, yell at you. Down your door. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to your house. And we will withhold a cookie until you do it. <laughs> until we have fun. Yep. <laughs> so, unless anyone else has any art they'd like us to critique? Any other questions they have? Any other pixies they like to boop? What? What? <laughs> boop pixie. That's, that's the call no. to arms. Oh, Soldier Point has one. Soldier. <laughs> On the ball there. You have a, a I don't picture. think, I don't think oh, the okay. stream's even oh, caught up. Okay. I think they're just listening in the chat and then just sent it in the Picato. <laughs> oh, they want to boot Pixie. Oh, <laughs> uh, I see. So, so you have a boot for Pixie, you don't have art for us. 
It's it's a betrayed. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, booping can be a form, an art form, like most things, I guess, you know? Yes. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you for submitting your art. Uh, remember to try and critique some other people. It can be very helpful for you, very helpful for the other person. Uh, helps you get understanding of your art. Yeah, it's very helpful for us as well, but that's that's a, that's also a side benefit. Uh, <laughs> Because I mean, it's it's sort of a good problem to have. like we don't we don't want to have nothing to do. It's some we have had parts in the the past where we've had like one picture or literally no pictures for the stream. We've gone on and be like, anyone have any art? Nope, cool, bye. But <laughs> it's uh, uh so we, we're sort of like, oh my god, what are we gonna do? People aren't like coming to MLBDS and posting their art for critique. Oh no, and uh, but you know now it's the opposite, and we have lots of art and no critiquing happening. So <laughs> it it does help that we don't have two hour streams, um, uh, but. It's also helpful for you. I, I, I meant it earlier when I said like I took college courses on art and most of it is an analytical work. Uh, just like getting pictures, uh, overanalyzing them, just breaking down every aspect of the composition, the meanings of everything, the techniques, just like everything. And it just it's because it's supposed to help you in understanding how to put art together. So it it will help you. And we're over here stealing your exp. So are you going to put up with that or are you going to critique and get that exp for yourself? <laughs> yeah, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, we're gonna say our goodbyes. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you for joining, and uh, join us next week for more ponies and art and boops and giraffes with silly faces. Yeah. References. Bye -bye. Get your references. References. Swoosh. <laughs> Sushi lines. Just get Swish. all the things out that we didn't talk about. Uh, <laughs> 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 bye bye, everyone. I want to share an art. Oh, you want to share an art? Just, yeah, just share. Okay, well, we... just share. no, no critique. I think critique you can wrap up. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're done. We're fin. Bye. <laughs>